the first of the four um, habits that we talk about in the first part of the book, we call um, the habit of focus. And that just means that we are very good at focusing attention on a subset of all the possible information that we could be using at any one time. And that's built into our visual systems. For example, we're very good at focusing on certain elements of of a a noisy and complicated visual world in front of us and understanding them very well. That is, for example, how we're able to watch sports, right? You couldn't watch sports with all the players moving around and the ball and the fans cheering and so on. It would make no sense unless you could really track things individually and pay attention to some parts of it and not others. So it's a critical ability for driving, for, you know, for all kinds of things. But yet the downside of it is we sort of don't realize how much we're not noticing, thinking about paying attention to when we're focusing. So a good con artist, basically just like a magician, you know, will try to control your attention, make sure that you have, you know, the information they want you to have, right? Make sure you're looking where they want you to look while they're doing the trick someplace else and use that at sort of multiple, multiple levels. You, you can see it in... Um, for example, when psychics do, you know, what they call their cold readings, like they're, what they're really doing are cold readings. It's just a mentalism technique. Plus, they're doing some additional cheating, usually, of looking stuff up about people online in advance and so on. But the way they make people believe in this is they get you to focus on exactly what they're saying and not think about what they're not saying, not think about what they said, you know, a few seconds before, which is no longer relevant or downright wrong. And that's one reason why they go so fast often. Um, so controlling focus is one of the key, you know, is one of the key things. One way to try to, you know, overcome that is just, you know, ask yourself what's missing. You need to sort of step back, slow down and say, what's missing? What am I missing? And as you mentioned in the book, we present this idea called the possibility grid. We call it the possibility grid. It's not really our invention. It's sort of like a common, it's a common thinking tool that emerges from research in cognitive psychology And the easy way to think about it is to imagine a coincidence. A lot of people are very drawn to coincidences. There are entire books and self-help movements based on coincidences being more meaningful than they are. For example, you know, you applied for a job a couple of days ago and you had an interview the next day. And then, you know, you just when you're thinking about, you know, how much you'd really like to have that job, the email arrives with the job offer, right? Now, some people out there want you to believe that you got the email and the job offer because you thought about getting the email and the job offer, as opposed to worrying about not getting the job offer. They would say, if you worried about not getting the job offer, you would not have gotten the job offer, that your thoughts would actually control the future in that way. Of course, that's not what's going on. What's happening is you're focusing on what we would call the top left box in this two by two grid. So imagine a two by two grid you know, four cells, like a tiny little tic-tac-toe thing, but just two by two. And the top left box are, in this case, I was thinking about the thing, you know, and the thing happened. But then what about all the times you think about something and it doesn't happen? You know, you might have thought about the job the day before and you didn't get the job the day before. You might have thought about your friend and they didn't call. Um, There's all kinds of times when you think about something and it doesn't happen. Then there are times when things happen that you weren't thinking about. Like, surprisingly, I got the job offer. I hadn't thought about it at all since the interview, but then they offered me the job still. And then there's the other box in the bottom right, which is you weren't thinking about the thing and it didn't happen, (laughs) you know, which is most of life, right? Most of life, you're not thinking about something and that thing doesn't happen, right? Once you see like there are all these boxes and the fact that there's one little thing in the top left box, but the other boxes have a lot of other things, many more than what's in the top left, you should pay less attention to the fact that there's something in the top left because it's sort of inevitable that once in a while you're going to think about something and it's going to happen. That's just statistically inevitable. And when those things have a lot of emotional weight, you know, they can really warp our thinking about cause and effect. So all kinds of stories of like, you know, a parent sensed that something was wrong with their child. And sure enough, you know, something had happened at school that day. But, you know, it's almost like they had a Vulcan mind meld or something like that or, you know, whatever. So if you think about those other three possibilities, besides the one that you're really focused on, you will realize that, your attention was really being, you know, directed the one that fits with a story that someone's trying to trying to sell you. You know, this is why companies will talk about, you know, only their success stories or why marketers will talk about, you know, how this marketing campaign, you know, coincided with some big uptick in sales, but they won't tell you about all their marketing campaigns that didn't lead to upticks in sales and all the unexpected sales bumps because of things that had nothing to do with the marketing campaigns and and so on. So yeah, the possibility grid, um, I think once you start sort of thinking about it more, you start to see more things that happen in the world that really fit into that framework. 